evening, everybody, and welcome to our final Wealthy Wednesday webinar for 2020. Thank you for joining us, um, or wherever you are joining us from. It might be the morning, it might be the afternoon, but we are very grateful that you have chosen this time to speak with us. Scott, thank you very much for being online with us and sharing your 20 lessons for the year. Awesome. Thanks, Lee. And uh... I'm not sure if it's, I hope it's, uh, I hope it's not on my side, but uh, uh, just if you can just let me know if I'm coming through clearly um, with the internet connection. <clears throat> I had a shocking webinar last night where my internet was down and everything in between. So if you can, uh, if you can all just let me know if, uh, if, if I'm coming through clearly and you can hear me loud and clear. We've got you, um, well, at least on my side in uh, Saudi Arabia, we definitely have you coming through clearly. So thank you again to everyone who has joined us tonight. As usual, I will be in the background um, collating all the questions and comments um, and really just watching everything that everyone says. So please, this is an interactive session. Please post your comments and your questions. We'll get Scott to answer as many as you can. And if there's any lessons that you want to share with the community, please post those as well. But let's start off by finding out where you are joining us from tonight. Um, as I said, I'm in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Um, very unusual for this time of year, but we've had four days of rain. And we are very grateful for the rain, but it has been very interesting, especially seeming there's no drainage on our roads. So you can imagine what it looks like out there. So let's see where everyone is joining us from tonight. We have got San Francisco Bay. Um, welcome, Jing. We've got Bloemfontein. Um, New Zealand. Gosh, people are up late and early. Namibia, McGregor. Durban, we've got people who are joining us from all over. So thank you very much for taking the time. Over to you, Scott. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, Lee. This is one of my uh, one of my better webinars for the year. I always enjoy this one. And I'm wearing my T-shirt that says Futurist because, you know, um, at the end of last year, I remember having a slide that said, are you ready for 2020? And uh, <clears throat> I think that's a little bit of an oxymoron now because I don't think any of us were ready for the year that, that, that was to come. Um, however, in this webinar, you know, we, we, we kind of tend to share what have we learned, you know, what are the lessons that have stood out for us this year, and have a bit of fun. I've been up since 4 a.m. this morning, so, um, you know, the energy that I feed uh, off everyone else will, will be, I will participate more. And I've flown up to Johannesburg and back, uh, so yeah, it's been an interesting day already. I just wanted to get started before we get into the, the lessons and remind everyone that, you know, for about a year and a half to two years, we've been talking about Wealth 5.0 and the change that's been happening. And I'm going to talk more about this tonight. You know, it's all about your impact, your creativity, your high touch, your high tech and your digital. And then something that I find, I still find fascinating. And uh, today is Wealthy Wednesday. And, you know, today, um, Lee and the team dropped the minimum investment to $97. You know, so this building which is in the center of, uh, of, of Tampa in, in Florida. It's the um, central tower. I remember watching a famous movie where these two American businessmen bought the highest tower in California. And they said, why did you buy that building? And they said, well, the highest tower always has all the banks. And if you are the landlord of all the banks, then it's gonna be the easiest access to money. And, uh, and you know, I never in my life thought that I'd be able to participate in a building like this with a partner that, that's got 40 years plus track record, you know, uh, something like 13, 14 billion dollars under management. And, um, you know, I've personally invested in the steel quite a lot more than $97. But what, what I just find so fascinating now with technology is that because it's Wealthy Wednesday, we dropped the minimum. Now, some of you are going to turn up and you're going to say, oh, but I haven't funded my wallet or I haven't done my KYC. I want to invest $97. That is called toughies. Okay, that's why we do Wealthy Wednesday because you need to get prepared because you never quite know when Lee might put through the next offer. And so um, it's only for people who have already funded their wallets. And maybe later, once I've done the 20 lessons, if you want to see me invest, I'll, I'll go and invest for you and you can see it happen live. So if you'd like to see that happen, you know, just chuck it in the chat box because it's absolutely fascinating for me. And I, and I think, you know, I can see Michael's online, you know, eight or nine years ago when you wanted to invest in America, you had to first negotiate with someone to come on a buyer's trip, then you had to come on a buyer's trip, then you had to buy a house, then you had to set up an LLC, then you had to set up a bank account. And the fact that in, you know, literally a minute or two, you can you can invest in a building like this with, with a partner. Now, just to put it in perspective, this partner on this building 
raised $20 million from Americans during COVID. Okay, now I don't know if you find that fascinating, but I find that fascinating. We're investing alongside them. In fact, we're actually investing um, higher up the capital stack than those Americans invested. And, um, you know, it just sort of shows uh, me, you know, the, the power of, of, of the technology and, and where the world is going. And that's really, you know, a lot to do with the wallets going live. And if you haven't tested or used the wallets, you know, I highly recommend that you do. You know, just to give you an example here, and I'm actually, I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to do it quickly. If I literally log in to Wealth Migrate, and uh, you, can, you can see I'm going in, I can literally sign in uh, to the platform. And once I'm inside, I've got access to all my different structures. I can go into my personal name. I can go into my, my overseas structures. I've, I can then go into my wallet. I can see what I've got in terms of my investments. I can see what I've got available. Um, I, you know, I can literally go in and, and, and see it all. Now, for anyone that's ever tried to do overseas uh, uh, investing, you'll know that this is an absolute nightmare. And I mean, you can see all my different investments. You can see all my different wallets. You can see the different currencies if I want to put it into, into pounds. Um, and the nice thing is I can literally bounce around and, and jump between the different systems. Um, it just takes a little while to update when, you, when you're changing the currencies, et cetera. Um, I'm not sure if people truly understand how powerful this actually is, where you can now invest truly around the world uh, all in one place. So, you know, I think the other thing that's important is that we've got our wealth consultants. And if you do want to reach out to them, you know, Fritz and Alex, reach out to them, have a chat with them. You know, we like to say that we're a, a digital platform with a human heart. And, uh, you know, if you're wanting to be onboarded and talk to a human being, you know, the, these, are the, these are two of the people that, that can assist. And then lastly, before I get into the 20 lessons, uh, Lee and the team ran a very successful webinar series. And um, we called it Wealth 5.0. And there were seven different parts to the series. Uh, the first one was, what are the similarities between 2000 and 2020? The second one was, what is an EXO business? What is an exponential business? The 11 principles you need to focus on and the scientific formula to understand the difference between companies who succeed and those who do not. You know, the eight technology trends and the eight societal trends, the changing world order, according to Ray Dalio, I'm gonna talk about that again tonight. Location, no longer the most important factor how all of these changes are impacting real estate by Prof. Ruli is one of the most respected people in the space. Society 5.0, Entrepreneur 5.0, Investor 5.0, Wealth 5.0. And then finally, the future is coming faster than you think. Now, if you, <clears throat> if you go online, uh, these are all available. You're all going to be in lockdown over Christmas, so you're going to have nothing to do. So you might as well watch all seven webinars. You're going to have time to, to watch all of them. There's probably about 14 hours worth of content, but you know, Lee, to you and your team, thank you very much for organizing this. I, I really enjoyed it. I learned a hell of a lot. And I'm, I'm the most grateful person because I'm the one that gets to present and interview these people. And, you know, I learn, I learn right at the coalface. So I just wanted to remind people of this. There are links um, that are available and you can go and watch the recordings. And, you know, I don't believe that as we go into this digital decade, if you don't have the knowledge behind these seven different areas, you know, life is going to be a real struggle. But without further ado, Let's move in to the 20 lessons from 2020. So this is always an interesting one. I've, um, I'm a little bit old school. I have literally printed a piece of paper and um, I've been doing quite a bit of work with Roger Hamilton. And rather than just having a rote uh, jumping through PowerPoints, I decided that uh, you, there is no PowerPoint tonight and we're literally gonna be jumping around and I'm gonna be sharing with you websites and whatever as we go. So if you're wanting to get the 20 things, I can share them and I think Lee will probably um, when we do the YouTube uh, recording, we'll put them in the um, in the description and we'll put them on in a circle and whatever. Um, but for now, they're, they're literally just uh, my handwritten notes in preparation. So the first one for me, um, the first lesson is what I call conscious uncoupling. So Kelly and I decided uh, to separate. Um, many people around the world call it divorce. Um, um, I had someone on Monday night call it successfully ending a marriage, which sounds a lot better than divorce. But actually, when I reached out to Roger Hamilton about a year and a half ago and said that we were going to start this process, he said to me, go and check out the concept of conscious uncoupling. And it's interesting because you can go and Google it here. And it'll come up with, uh, with this lady, basically, um, for conscious uncoupling. And this book, there's an audio book um, where you can listen to the book or you can read the book. 
And what's really, really interesting is that, you know, there's a whole bunch of things here. You can go, go watch a whole, her name's Catherine Woodward Thomas. And you can go watch a whole bunch of um, videos. Uh, the people behind Mind Valley did exactly the same thing. And what's really interesting is that it's becoming more and more popular um, in America and, and in the West. And, you know, most of us go and we literally, you know, end up uh, in court and we, we kill each other for, for two or three years. And the only people who actually lose are the children. And um, what's really interesting is that by doing conscious uncoupling, there's two things that are important. And, and why I'm sharing this is that many of you that are on this call are not thinking about getting divorced or not getting divorced. Uh, you might have friends just by the way, um, who are, and, and this, is a, this is a real gift you can give to them. But actually, I think there's a better metaphor in this whole thing, because actually, if you take COVID and the impact COVID's had on every single one of us, um, the principles of, co of conscious uncoupling are, are quite similar. So the first one is, is that no matter how or what anyone else does, you don't let their behavior impact your behavior. So you stand uh, true to who you are, your values, your culture, your, you know, what's important to you, what, 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 what will you stand for, basically. And therefore, no matter how good or bad someone treats you, you, you basically commit to be the best person you can possibly be. And the second thing that you do is you focus on the outcome you want. So, you know, I'll tell a funny story, and I don't know if I should or shouldn't share this, but um, Kelly was, uh, was dealing with one of her lawyers, and um, he sent a message to her thinking he, he was sending it to her, but he sent it to me. And it was a WhatsApp, and he was telling her how he was going to come to Nisna and kick me in the you know what. And, um, and I thought it was quite, quite interesting because, you know, if I hadn't gone through that conscious uncoupling phase, you might have immediately spiraled out and said, okay, well, let's get lawyers, let's have a huge fight. And I I just laughed. It was like, whatever's dude. Like, uh, and, um, and, and for me, the outcome was very, very simple. It was to make sure that, oh, hang on. What just happened there? Have I just uh, lost we, you? We, no, we've still got you, Scott. We just don't have your video. There we go. You're back. So weird. Okay, let me just see what's going on there. Lost my other screen. Power saving mode. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, we don't have you on video. We've just got your picture. Oh, there we are. There we go. Got it. Got it. Um, so, so anyway, the 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 point of the point of what I'm uh, what I'm going on about here is uh, is it's focused on the outcome. So, in, in in simple terms, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was there for John T and and that I was his dad and and that I'd be you know as part of his life going forward. I wanted to make sure that Kelly uh, was in a far better and happier place. And um, what was fascinating to me is that by sticking true to the outcome, you know, we, we, we managed to do it all ourselves without lawyers getting, you know, deeply involved. Um, and, you know, we eventually got it all through the courts and, and everything else. And um, what's important is that, and, and just by the way, um, these links, Lee, what I suggest I'll probably do then is I'll just chuck them all in the chat box. And then we'll, we'll have to, if you can maybe just save them and then we can put them on a Word doc for everyone, basically. Um, but, um, but what's important here is that this metaphor has already worked so well for me. I was in a business uh, conflict and the lawyers were going back and forth and, and um, I decided, well, hang on, this worked so successfully for Kelly and I. You know, Kelly's in a much better place. Jonty's in a great place. I'm in a much better place. I thought, well, I should apply that to everything I do in my life. And so I did, and you know, I'm quite chuffed to say that just today I flew back from Joburg and what was spiraling out of control was lawyers getting involved. I, I believe we've sorted uh, using the exact same principles of conscious uncoupling. So my first one, and probably one of my greatest achievements um, in 2020 is being able to follow the principles of conscious uncoupling and, and not ending up in a massive three or four year court battle um, where I hardly get to see my son and he ends up a drug addict and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, so that, that, that for me is the, 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 the first one. The second one is, uh, is this guy, Ray Dalio. And, um, you know, we did a whole webinar on Ray Dalio. And so I'm not going to repeat all the stuff. But what I would highly recommend is that you go and watch the, um, the, video, the webinar. Because what I did with Ray Dalio is I went and took all of his knowledge that I could find, um, all of these changing world order, there's a whole book, that you've got his book, The Prince, uh, Principles, etc. And I literally turned it into a two-hour webinar. Um, so if you want to literally get everything all in one place, 
then this is where it is. But I mean, it's, it's, he's, he's putting his entire book, believe it or not, onto LinkedIn. And so you can get it all. And if there's a book that you didn't read last year, because every year I try and recommend uh, books for you, is uh, Principles. Now, this is one of the best books that I've uh, ever read. Um, it's literally in my top five uh, books uh, that I've ever read, which you know, for someone who consumes as many books as I do, that's quite a big uh, statement. Uh, it's not my book for 2020 because it came out last year. Um, but what's really important with Ray Dalio is that the world has completely changed. And, um, and he saw it coming. He's been talking about it coming for a while. And um, what's really interesting is that you really need to understand the long-term debt cycles, the short-term debt cycles, the political insecurities, the social inequalities. And you need to bring it all together to realize where the world is going. And he says the one and only thing that we can do as investors is to focus on diversification. Diversification across assets, across countries, across currencies, and across partners. And um, I've, you know, you can go and watch any recording or anything that he writes, and it's the same thing over and over and over again. He just says diversification, diversification, diversification. So you know, I think, again, I'm not going to dwell too much on Ray Dalio because I think we did an entire webinar on it. But, but honestly, Ray Dalio for me has been the standout person to follow this year. He's by far and away been the best, in my opinion, um, in giving advice on where the world is going, what's happening, and most importantly, why it's happening. So again, I'm a big believer in the fact that history repeats itself. I'm a big believer in patterns. I love history and studying it. I love pattern recognition. I think I'm quite good at it. Um, but this guy plays at a whole nother level. And, um, and, and I would highly recommend going and checking him out. So my second lesson is around Ray Dalio. My third one is around acceleration. And, uh, and the whole COVID thing. So, you know, it's interesting if you do a search for COVID, uh, what actually comes up. So if you, if you put it in here and you go to images and um, there's just uh, so many different things that, uh, that come up. And if you put it in, you know, to just search generally, you've got all this uh, stuff that just kind of never stops um, in terms of the process. But what I, what I think is really interesting is that I would actually go, and I'm taking a bit of a chance here opening up my uh, WhatsApp. I don't think that's such a good idea, but let me go. I want to go and find you a video. And um, I said that this is a much list, um, uh, a must listen. Okay, so this is the video here. Amazon was primed for a pan. And I'm going to put this in the uh, link. Sorry, I'm only sending this to the panelists. Why am I doing that? I should be sending it to everyone. Apologies. Um, so this video was sent out by one of... Uh, one of our partners and we've got these different groups and if you're part of our inner circle you would know what i'm talking about and for me this is the value of our, our overall community is that i don't find and learn all the stuff you know other people find it and learn it for for us so i'm just looking for my notebook here here it is because i made some notes and um this video is short it's only 10 minutes long but what is so interesting just to give you a little bit of a of a of a <laughs> of an indication it took 18 years for e-commerce uh, to get to an 18% uh, market share. So e-commerce over retail, it took 18 years. It took 10 weeks to go from 18% to 28%. That's quite amazing. Um, there's obviously been a dramatic uh, change in our lifestyles around remote working. If you've seen any of my webinars, I've spoken about it. There's this acceleration of trends. You know, people think COVID has changed things. It hasn't changed things. All it's done is accelerate things. So I wanted to share another, and this is why I said to you this webinar is going to be one of these type of webinars. But um, there was an article today that I read in the newspaper, and here it is here. <clears throat> UK retailers, two of the biggest uh, UK retailers have gone out of business, okay, in the last 24 hours. Now, are we going to sit around and blame COVID and say that, uh, you know, COVID created them to go out of business or were they going out of business anyway? And, uh, and, and all that COVID did is accelerated. Now, just to give you some numbers here, uh, the two retailers are Arcadia and Debenhams. Uh, Debenhams. I used to go to Debenhams. I remember them. Um, they have 600 stores combined across the UK. 600. Uh, they're going to lose 235,000 jobs combined. Um, Debenhams, to put into perspective, is 232 years old. Um, and this whole article goes on to say how, you know, they were already on their knees pre-COVID and then, you know, COVID just knocked them over. 
And um, what's also interesting is it took Apple 42 years to get to a trillion dollar valuation, 42 years. And it took 20 weeks to add another trillion. Now, I don't know, Lee, if it's just me that finds this stuff fascinating, but uh, I mean, these, the, these numbers are just absolutely astounding. Amazon had 500,000 employees and it took them 25 years to get to 500,000 employees. And they've doubled that in six months. Six months. And the last stat that is in this video by Michael Skormish, Skormish however you pronounce that, is that 82% of American households, 82% of American households pay for Amazon Prime. Okay, so Amazon Prime is the subscription service where you pay like seven, eight, nine, ten dollars I don't know exactly what it is. 82% of American households. They said never in the history of American commerce as one company had such widespread penetration across every household in America, not even telephones. Now, that's what I talk about um, when I talk about COVID and acceleration. I've given you uh, the link uh, to this video. I'd highly recommend it. And the other thing that I would look at is there's the book that I read this year called um, The Future is Coming Faster Than You Think. And it's by... Um, Peter Diamantes and Michael Kotler. And uh, you know he's the guy that wrote Bold and everything else. This is an amazing book if you want to know what's happening with, uh, with the... Deirdre is saying she can't see me. Is that... Lee, can you see me? Um, no, I think Deirdre um, thought that those stats that you were reading were meant to be on the screen. Um, oh, as opposed yeah. to you no, just reading out of your notebook. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. I did all this preparation, but I, I didn't create PowerPoint slides. And there was no point. I mean, I would have had to literally screenshot this page. It's easier just to go to it, quite frankly. Um, so, yeah, yeah, Deirdre, you're going to have to stay with me and take notes. Um, <clears throat> so that's point number three. And, and this book I would, I would really recommend. Point number four is coaching. Now, I've had coaching... Uh, all my life, um, literally for the last 20 years. And it's quite interesting for me because, you know, last year for this session, we did a whole session on um, goals. And, you know, what's interesting to me is that I haven't had a personal coach. So I've had lots of coaches like Roger Hamilton and stuff, but I haven't had a personal weekly coach for a long time. And I had a coach in South Africa, a guy called Richard Neft, who's been amazing. And I went back to him. It was my mom's advice. And I went back to him uh, myself. And uh, this year from January, and he's just made such a difference uh, in my life, um, helped me make such measurable progress this year uh, by holding my feet to the fire, by, by um, holding me accountable, and, um, but also by offering me you know, sage advice. And there's another great book, and I'm sorry, um, this is the purpose of, uh, of tonight's webinar is, is to give you some reading material uh, for your holidays, but it's called The Trillion Dollar Coach. And this guy, Bill Campbell, was the um, pretty much the business coach of Silicon Valley. He, he coached Google, he coached Facebook, he grow, coached Amazon, he coached Apple. That's why they call him the trillion dollar coach, because he helped all these companies succeed. And they're worth trillions of dollars. And I love this book. You know, if you, if you love business, if you love teams, if you love high performance, if you love leadership, then you'll love this book. And I'd say this book was probably uh, my favorite book of 2020. Uh, this, this will be the book. I hope I don't argue with myself later down the line because I've got a few other ones, but I think this was my best book of 2020 by a long way. And it all comes down to coaching. And so, you know, my fourth lesson is coaching. Uh, get yourself a coach. Highly, highly recommend it. But equally, um, read this book, you know, whether you're in business yourself or you're trying to be part of a high-performing team, read this book because it'll give you some great insights on how to do it. Uh, point number five was people skills. And, and how to create a high performance team. Now, you know, for years we've been using wealth dynamics, which is the um, Roger Hamilton thing, where you can effectively know what people are um, up front. And again, I, I don't have time tonight, and I'm happy to go back to any of these things I point out if people ask questions. But it's really important to know who you are, because if you know who you are, then you can be very good at, at what you do, basically. And uh, 
you know, and as an example, like someone like a Richard Branson is completely different to a Warren Buffett. So you've got to kind of know who you are. And we use this internal coding system because it's nice and easy. You know, if, if Lee tells me she's a Lord, I know what a Lord is. And if I tell her that I'm a creator, she knows what a creator is. And that comes with the positive and the negatives. Because by the way, there's no, there's no right and there's no wrong. Like every character and every person has their pros and their cons, but it helps us just better understand each other. Um, the second thing that, that is really interesting for me is that within my coaching, um, uh, Richard does all this uh, PDD stuff. So if you look here, um, PDD stands for your personal driving uh, dynamics. And again, I, um, I'm happy to share this if someone wants to read it. But if you look at it, like, so, so what we do is we overlay the two together. You've got wealth dynamics, which is an overall framework, and then you've got your personal driving dynamics, and there's 22 constructs. And what's really interesting is that personal development is my number one. Okay, so, you know, if, if you want to know why I like doing this webinar and sharing with other people, and I love going on webinars, and I love learning and reading books, well, it's obvious, personal development is my number one. If you, you know, why do I like to go to events and all that? Ability utilization. Like I back myself to get stuff done. Freedom of lifestyle. <laughs> I don't know, Lee, if you can see in the background there, but the lagoon is looking pretty awesome at the moment. And, uh, you know, for someone living in Nisna, it, it kind of sums it up. Creativity, I love being creative. Autonomy, uh, don't tell me what to do. Authority, I like to tell other people what to do. Uh, working conditions, you know, I, uh, I want to make sure that, you know, my stuff works. I hate it when the internet doesn't work. And social concern, you know, the wealth movement and the fact that Bongi has uh, finished matric and, you know, that it's, uh, it's, it's you know, empowering a billion people. Uh, these things are, are very important. So what, what I think is important as well is that um, you can actually see here as what my, I've done this for 10 years now, and you can literally go and um, you can see how I've changed. So personal development's always been kind of up there, ability utilization, freedom of lifestyle, result, results orientation, different things have changed, but generally your constructs uh, stay the same. And so, you know, the better you know yourself, the better you can succeed. Like, I don't know how to say that. Like, you know, because if Lee turns around to me and says, Scott, I want you to go and dig holes. Okay, I'd be like, can I dig holes? Yes, because my ability to utilization is high, and I can go and dig holes. But will I be very happy and fulfilled digging holes? Not a hope in hell. Or what about financial guarantee? So most employee people, rightly or wrongly, it doesn't matter, there's no right and wrong, it just is, want to have a salary. If you give me a fixed salary with no upside, you, it's like putting me a, like a caging a tiger. Like you can see there, like it doesn't excite me at all to get a fixed salary. Um, financial compensation, whole different story. Show me, show me the money, isn't it? What is, how does that saying go? <laughs> um, and I'll take all the risk if I need to, but I want, I want the upside. Um, so again, you know, the more you know about the stuff, the better. Now, what's interesting is that is that if you overlay that, and I don't know if I can do this, I don't want to share other people's names. So I'm going to just quickly go above so people can't see names. Um, but we actually do it for our entire team. And, uh, and when you do it for your whole team, for our whole leadership, we've done for our whole leadership team, our whole commercial team. Now you can start to see the overlay between different people. So just to use compensation as an example, these people over here, where has it gone now? Financial compensation, financial guarantee. So these two people here, you better make sure that you pay them their salary every month. Okay, this person, completely the opposite. Okay, um, financial compensation as in they want upside. If this person, if you don't give them bonuses, these ones here, they'll be gone. And you can start to see how this stuff overlays. You can see the DNA of your team. You can see whether you've got enough creativity, whether you've got enough results orientation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the last thing that I think is, is critically important is that, is that we also uh, get a wellness indicator. So we can, and this is really what Lee, um, within our head of community, because remember a community is external and internal. This is one of her, um, one of her um, key results, which is how's the team doing? You know, and I, again, I don't have time tonight to go into this. Now, why I, um, why I share this with you is that I was doing this for four or five years um, within our IPS team, and we had we had quite a high-performing team, and then you know when 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 we kind of evolved into this bigger kind of corporate group, this was all seen as wishy-washy stuff, and you know Scott's uh, Scott's out there stuff, and again coming back to Bill Campbell and and learning about some of the greatest companies in the world, 
I just realized this is absolute rubbish. Like this is, the, this is how the best performing teams in the world work. You look after your people first, you get them in alignment, you get them in flow, and then you succeed. So um, the, 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 you know, under the people skills, the other thing that I've learned over and over again in the last two years is higher quality experienced people. So we've done it three times in the last two, two or three years. The first one we hired Gavin and, you know, on the technology front. And I mean, he, he, we didn't know what we didn't even know until he turned up. And then, then I was trying to learn about digital marketing and I was like going on all these courses and whatever. And then we hired Aubrey and I realized like we didn't, we didn't have a clue. We didn't even know what we didn't know until he turned up. And more recently we hired Gabby in terms of sales and, and revenue. And again, like she literally uses acronyms I've never heard of before. I actually asked her, and I'm embarrassed to say this, but I asked her in a job interview if she had spelled her title wrong on LinkedIn because I'd never heard of, uh, of inline sales before. I thought she meant online sales. And she goes, don't you know what inline sales are? I was like, uh, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, higher quality people is, is, and I think this is one that entrepreneurs get wrong all the time because they say they can't afford good people. But I'd go as far as to say you can't afford uh, not to have good people. And then, um, and, and also, you know, again, Lee and I and Lyndon, as an example, are what we call Swiss army knives, okay, where we can like kind of do a bit of everything. But as we, as the, and you need that in the beginning of an organization, but as you evolve, you need more and more specialists uh, to really find your flow. The last thing I'd say on people skills is that, and, and I looked actually at my 2019 um, lessons and one of them was the Springboks. And, and for the non-South Africans, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to repeat this one because this year uh, Chasing the Sun came out and um, I would highly recommend watching that. Again, if you're a sports lover, you'll love it um, in the same way that I don't follow basketball, but I enjoyed the Michael Jordan video. Um, but what I really enjoyed with the Russia Erasmus is I really analyzed what happened. And, and if you think about it, within 18 months, they went from the worst performing sports team the Springboks had ever been to winning the World Cup. And, and how did he do it? Well, the first thing he did was he had to have the belief himself. And he, then he had to share the belief with others. And then after the belief, they needed a plan. Okay. And then from the plan, they had to go and fund the plan. Because actually, had, they were the worst performing team, but they had to get money to fund the plan. And then they had to sell the plan to the players. Now, remember, it was the same players. Okay, but they had to sell the plan to the players. And finally, they had to build team spirit. And by doing that, they spoke about the elephants in the room. They spoke about the tough things. So in South African terms, it was about transformation and all the things they hadn't spoken about you know, before. And um, with that team, team spirit and camaraderie, um, I, again, I could probably do an entire webinar on, on, on my, my findings from that. But... You know, I would highly, highly recommend that. So anyway, people skills is getting a bit long. <laughs> As you can see, this is one I really enjoyed this year. Point number six, happiness. So this is an interesting one for me because I've, um, I've uh, gone through some massive troughs on, on both sides and I think probably Lee even more so. Um, you know, with, with being in your own lockdown for seven months and now being home with your husband and it was his birthday last night and fantastic. But I found in happiness, you know, COVID has really challenged all of us let's be frank i don't care it, almost every single one of us has have had our challenges and um the first thing i realized is that i need to remove negativity from my life you know remove negative people re remove negative messages uh, get complete control of my life so that was morning rituals uh, many of you or some of you are on the challenge that um that lee runs which is the 60 day challenge you know where i don't switch on my cell phone until i've done my prime and i've done my exercise and i've Basically, I had me time before I let the world in. And um, that made such a difference. You know, the, the 60 day challenges made such a difference to me personally. And, you know, I thank the people that started it almost at this time last year. We've been doing it a full year. And I stand to be corrected, Lee, but I think we're on number five. Is it five or six uh, for the year? And, um, and, then, and then I also found Mind Valley. And, you know, I highly recommend uh, going to Mind Valley. Um, you know, I signed up for Mind Valley. It cost me seven hundred dollars, I think, and I've got all access for a year. And I've just done so many courses from just the most amazing people all over the world. And um, it really is incredible what what you can do here. And it's it's no more than twenty minutes a day. So, um, sorry, it's it's not not the best at logging in and stuff. Um, but it's only twenty minutes a day. And you can go and literally learn from some of the best in the world. And I've done everything. I've done sleep. I've done energy. I've done, uh, I've done life book. Um, it's, it's been really, really amazing. Um, all the different stuff. I think I've done seven or eight of them, but there's so many different courses. You, you literally, you know, you, you can't, uh, you can't get better. So I'll put that in the, in for, for you as well. 
on mind value. Um, and then the last thing I'd say around happiness was also, I found, you know, I used to be traveling all the time. It was so weird today to be on an airplane yesterday and today for the first time since March, which is just like unheard of for me. But I actually quite enjoyed the consistency of staying in, in one place and being able to ride on a Tuesday and play squash on a Tuesday night and, you know, and, and have some consistency in my life. And, um, and you know, I think, uh, I think it also had a big, uh, big impact on Jonty, which, which was a good thing. And so, you know, around the happiness thing, I really think that, you know, that, that is a choice. And, you know, Lee, I think you, you epitomize that and, and you deserve the credit here where, you know, you're in the middle of lockdown and it had been, I don't know, six months and you've been delayed again because some, some camel hadn't delivered the visa on time and something. And, and I remember you saying where you were so upset and you just jumped out of bed and you said, watch out world, I'm coming. I, I can't remember your exact wording, but it was your attitude. And, you know, you were going through, you know, what most people in their lives hopefully won't experience. And yet you were always the most positive person in our team. And I, and I think you epitomize um, what I'm trying to say here, which is that we get to choose how we feel. We don't have to let the world impact us, you know? What did you say? Can you remember? What were your exact words? I did. That was exactly what I said, Scott. I, I stamped out of bed that day. I literally jumped out of bed and thought, I've got to shake this off and watch out world, I'm coming. Um, so thank you, Scott, for that. I really do appreciate it. But Scott is completely um, correct in that. It, you cannot control what happens to you, but you control the way you react to it um, and how much you let it impact your life. So um, just try and think of a positive outcome for everything. And sometimes it just literally is, oh, my cup of coffee is lukewarm instead of my cup of coffee is cold. Those small mindset changes absolutely make such a huge impact on your day-to-day -day life. It's funny you say that because I literally said that to someone today. You know, if, if you're planning on going on holiday by airplane, I highly recommend that you give yourself a little talking to and say, this is going to be an interesting experience that I have not experienced before because arriving at Oatumbo was bloody worse than arriving at Beijing airport. And you must understand for someone that flew more often than most people drive in their car, um, you know, it was a bloody shit show. No one knew what was going on. And I don't know, my attitude was just like, I'd arrive early. I wasn't in a rush. You know, if it took an extra half an hour, so be it, you know, whatever. And uh, it, again, it all comes down to attitude. The next one for me was was health. I got to watch the time here. Shit, we're only on number seven, um, and uh, and we did that sixty day challenge. And you know, I'm embarrassed to say that you know I was 107 kilos uh, just as we were going into March, and I was talking to my coach, and I was going to lose 10 kilos, and uh, <laughs> and then we had COVID, and I ballooned uh, by 10 kilos. So I kind of got my maths in addition uh, the wrong way around. And um, anyway, I decided no, no more of this. And uh, this is a health plan that I've done, which I also highly recommend, called Metabolic Balance. And, um, and, you know, what actually happens is it's your DNA for your body. So it tells you like what you should eat uh, every single um, day. There's eating plans and all that. And there's different phases um, that you can do and, you know, different meal plans and whatever. And um, two things happened to me because I had another coach. I had a coach, a health coach. And uh, he said to me, Scott, I have no doubt that in 60 days you're going to do the challenge. Um, but I have no doubt that you're going to put the weight back on unless you change your identity. And so for me, when it came to health, I'm quite chuffed because I think I made quite a metamorphic change in changing my identity. Like I like the way I feel and look at the moment and, and I don't want to change that. And I'm quite enjoying the food I'm eating as well. So, you know, for me back to health, you know, probably three lessons are coming through there. One is don't just go on a diet, like actually get something that suits your body type and your DNA and, you know, set yourself up for success long-term, um, which, which is what I did Yeah, You know, secondly, get a coach that's going to hold you accountable. And thirdly, you need to make a long-term decision. It's not just, hey, I want to lose some weight. It's like, do you want to make a, a, an identity shift, um, which, hopefully, which hopefully I've done. Number eight is Flow. And, uh, and this is a book that I really enjoyed this year uh, called The Rise of Superman. Now, it's actually quite an older book. Um, I don't know why I've never uh, come across it before, but um, it came out in 2011 or something, I think. Um, and I've never heard of it before. And I don't know why it suddenly popped up on my horizon. But I love the principle of flow. And this is an amazing book. If you enjoy action sports and, and high adrenaline and, and people that do crazy things like surf high big waves or, you know, um, all, the, all the crazy adrenaline sports. But what's more interesting is that, that this whole book is about decoding the principle of flow. Um, and if you've heard me, I mean, that's how I met Lyndon many years ago. I've always been fascinated by flow. Flow is when you laugh when you're going downstream, when life is easy. It's like 
catching a wave and, and kind of just body surfing with the wave. You know, most people are trying to swim upriver. They're trying to swim against the wave. And that's why you might notice the patterns aren't. Find out who you are. Find out what you love and kind of get in your flow and go with the flow. Life's just so much easier and so much more enjoyable. So this is a, this is a great book I would recommend on flow. And um, since reading this book, I've done some pretty stupid things like ride a mountain bike off a ramp and, you know, I hurt myself. But, uh, but I was trying to tell myself that this is good for flow, but maybe that, that's not so wise. Um, the next one for me is, uh, is accountability. And um, the book that comes up under accountability is, uh, is, what's it called? Sorry, just quickly, I need to get my phone here. I've just forgotten the name of it. What Measures Matters or something. What what you measure matters, Google. Measure what matters, this is the book. And um, so the most successful companies out there um, use this and they're called OKRs, Objectives and Key Results. You know, we've been lucky to have James Potten on our board and more recently, Willem van der Post has joined our board. And, and again, all these successful companies are like, guys, this is, this is what you need to use. And one of my biggest weaknesses is being accountability and it's holding people accountable. And I remember Roger saying to me years ago, he doesn't need to fire anyone because the numbers speak for themselves and people actually leave before they, um, I'm, I'm happy to share my uh, metabolic eating plan with people, but please understand you can't copy mine because <laughs> it's, you know, it's different for everyone. Um, but so, so we, um, we've been trying to implement this for years. And quite frankly, we've just had a bunch of excuses as to why we didn't do it. And, um, and finally, we just, we, just, we just did it. And uh, it's not perfect, but we've got started. And um, we literally implemented this Lee, I don't know, three weeks ago or something. Um, and we're really trying to bring in accountability. Now, the beauty with accountability is that it equally allows people autonomy. So you know, it allows, rather than everyone trying to be having a bunch of chiefs and no Indians, it allows everyone to have the autonomy to get on and get the job done because it's very clear of what they are doing. But then equally is the accountability, you know, to get the job done so that we can all rely on each other uh, to get stuff done. So, you know, what, what's interesting to me is that anyone that wants to succeed in life needs dashboards. And so I was filling in a wealth audit for uh, Roger Hamilton. I've got a coaching session tomorrow and it's like, do you have financial dashboards for yourself, not for your company, for yourself? Do you have budgets? Do you have goals? Do you have a future vision? They're all dashboards. They're all stuff where you, where you, where am I at? And am I on progress? If you've, if you've done our, um, our micro degree, I can't remember. I think it's point number six is, is measure your progress. You know, there's absolutely no point in setting a goal if you don't measure your progress um, against it. And um, one of the things that I've also learned uh, this year, and it's a, it's a negative uh, comment, but um, unfortunately, fire fast. We all hear about it. We all read the, the books on it. Um, but particularly when you like the person, one of my biggest weaknesses is that, you know, someone can be a complete um, idiot and I'll still find the good in them and, and, um, and, and not want to get rid of them, you know, and I give myself a hundred reasons why not to. And uh, we had an experience this year where, you know, we didn't and we didn't and we didn't and we didn't. And then when they left, we, we actually didn't know what they did. Um, and, and, and then when someone um, really stepped up and started working, we realized like how little they were doing. And then towards the end of the year, we brought in someone that like has super experience in the space. And then we really realized how, what a bad mistake we had made. And so, you know, it's certainly a love lesson I learned that, uh, you know, I hopefully will never repeat again. The next one for me, so we're up to uh, number 10 now, so we're halfway there, is ESGs. Now, this is a new one that I'd never heard of before. And I was embarrassed enough to tell you that I had to go and Google it um, about two months ago because everything and everyone was talking about the rise of, uh, of ESGs. And um, they stand for environmental, social, and corporate governance. And more and more, um, this is becoming a massive thing in terms of uh, businesses. So again, in today's newspaper, funny enough, um, in the same section of the newspaper, there was a whole section here on... <clears throat> How much good or bad a firm does should be monetized. Professor George Serafan aims to revolutionize the bottom line by adding or subtracting dollar impact that products and operations have on people and the planet. So, you know, it's really interesting. This, this purpose-driven businesses, you know, if you've been on the webinars with Willem, he's spoken about all the, 
the Fortune 500 CEOs have signed this impact, uh, this pact, and you know, funding now. Um, BlackRock doesn't fund you know companies that aren't sustainable. So you know, th this is now you know, as uh, as Richard Branson says, you know, this is not just good for um, just you know, good. It's good for business. Like, and and you really need to start thinking like that. And you know, it's it's interesting because imagine if your balance sheet and your PL like started now trying to have, you know, which, you know, how much good are you having in the world? I'd like to think, Lee, we, we should be pretty, we should be pretty, doing pretty well with that. But, but, you know, personally, like nowhere near where, where I think we should, you know, it's, 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 it irritates me that, that we're not, you know, not doing a hell of a lot more, but really watch into ESGs. This has gone from a space where no one cared 10 years ago to it's big now. And over the next 10 years, it'll be absolutely massive. Um, Number 11 for me is uh, trust but verify. <laughs> so I, um, I learned another uh, lesson this year the hard way where, again, my Mr. Nice Guy, I just assumed that, um, you know, I, I, I just can't understand how you could screw someone. It I just doesn't enter my DNA. I've always been bad at it. I, I cannot see the, the ill-intentioned people. And, you know, I suppose I've, I've learned that. So, you know, I've signed contracts and stuff without needing lawyers, you know, why would you need a lawyer? We're doing a, you know, we're doing a, 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 an MOU here with two people that have the intent to, you know, be good to each other and, and to everyone involved. And unfortunately, when I finally realized that I was dealing with people that probably weren't um, have with the same intentions and you got the lawyers involved, you realized um, all the innuendos that were behind the scenes and all the games that were actually being played. And so trust but verify, you know, you might trust someone, but make sure you're verifying uh, behind the scenes. And, um, you know, I suppose really at the end of the day, as much as people don't say it, you know, people generally look after themselves. And, um, and uh, I suppose I learned that, the, you know, really the hard way this year um, in terms of where I thought people had the best interests of the community and shareholders and a whole bunch of other things. And, and at the end of the day, you know, often people are just driven by their own um, their own need and, and, and what they want. Uh, point number 12 is venture building. Now, this is quite a hard one for me to search on because I actually don't know what to search for you on it. Um, I have recently signed up again to um, Roger Hamilton um, to his Sapphire Circle. Um, it's by invite only. And I just want to see, here it is. So why venture capitalists will soon be replaced by venture builders. Um, this for me is fascinating. This is a massive shift that is happening around the world. Uh, Roger has taken his company from $30 million to $300 million this year um, by doing venture building and is listing on the New York Stock Exchange. As I said to you, I've signed up um, to be close to Roger. Um, I've, I've managed to get accepted into the Sapphire Circle, which is their top 10 people. And there's probably two lessons in this. And, you know, if you know me well enough now and you've been to enough of the coaching things that I've done, you know, I always try and get closest to source. So is Roger the best in the world? I don't know. Okay. Maybe, probably not. But he's the closest that I can get to the inner circle to learn. You know, I can go and watch YouTube videos. I can go and read about it. I can go and, you know, but all I could learn by doing and I can get right into the center of it. And, um, you know, I really think that this venture building uh, space is where the world's going because it's all about partnerships. It's all about sustainability. Bless you, Lee. And uh, we might have to lock you down there, Lee. And, uh, and, and really what, what, what's so important is that this all then feeds in um, to the next thing, which is the whole Society 5.0. And again, we've done an entire webinar on this. So I'm not, I'm not going to repeat all the stuff um, on Society 5.0. But again, credit to Roger Hamilton. I first heard about this when, um, you know, through him and it came from the Japanese. And from there, it's been extended now into, into Investor 5.0, Entrepreneur 5.0, Property 5.0, and even you know, Wealth 5.0. And it's really important that you understand this stuff because this is where the world's going. Like the whole decade, this next decade is all about the digital decade. And you need to know all about this. So you've got venture building and then you know, you've, you've got and how venture building plays into the whole overall landscape. And, Again, if you, any of the webinars that I've mentioned, those seven webinars, that's why I did it up front, because you can see some of these deep areas, whether it's Society 5.0 or Ray Dalio, um, et cetera. We've done webinars on them. We've done like whole two hour webinars on them. So tonight, I'm not going into all that detail again. I'm, I'm telling you the 20 overall things. 
Number three was our three core values. And, um, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to values, they believe that they are just kind of letters that people put on a wall and it's kind of a bit of corporate rah-rah. You know, rah. um, I believe that we really do try and live up to our three core values of trust, transparency, and alignment. And, um, you know, I've, I learned a very hard lesson uh, this year is that whenever we don't live up to our values, or, or not so much we don't live up to our values, but we don't stress test them, it's when we get ourselves into trouble. So we had a couple of instances this year and, and one, um, you know, one major one where we and another party were not aligned. Okay. And when that happens, um, it's only a matter of time until it falls apart. You know, I always say when an estate agent sells you a house, you're wanting to buy a house for the best price and they're wanting to make a commission. You know, do you think it's going to end well? <laughs> when, when an insurance broker sells you, you know, long-term life insurance, you're doing it because you want money at the end of the time and they're doing it because they want to get an upfront commission. Do you think it's going to end well? You know, when, when you talk to your financial advisor, you know, you're investing for your long-term retirement and they are getting a commission. Like, do you think it's going to end well? That's alignment. And, and yet what's so often is that, you know, if, if I said to Lee, you know, if, you, if a husband, and, if a man and a woman met and the man was marrying for money and the woman was marrying for love, you know, is it going to work? It's not going to work. And we all know this stuff intuitively, but yet we make that mistake over and over and over again. And so, you know, we had an example this year where a couple of examples where one was where us and another party were in line. We had an, an example where us, uh, not us, our partner and the investors were not aligned. And again, we, you know, we, we learned a lesson there. And, and then trust, you know, when, um, when your, little, your little voice is uh, saying to you, hang on, hang on, hang on, there's something wrong here. Um, even if you can't prove it, you know, often it's there. You just haven't got to the bottom of it yet, you know. So, you know, um, and then lastly, around transparency, you know, it kind of, it kind of leads into, um, into the next one, funny enough. And, and there's, you know, logically, there was a bit of order to this. But um, in 2015, October 2015, um, I was on stage. We ran the very first crowdfunding event in, uh, in, in Bryanston and Joburg. And there were a number of reporters there. And I was quoted as saying that we had a financial services license. And, um, and I, I don't think I said that. And I don't, you know, I said we wanted to get one, but I wouldn't have said we had one if we didn't have one, because that would be illogical. <laughs> um, and anyway, it came out in the, uh, you know, in the press release that we had a license. And then the FSB came out and said we didn't have a license. And not that we didn't have a license. We couldn't get a license because there was no such thing as a license for crowdfunding. And we ran away at the time. And, and, um, and what I mean by ran away is we cowed away and we, we were like, oh, naughty, naughty people. We shouldn't have done that. And, and I learned a huge lesson from um, reading the book uh, called um, Upst Upstarts, uh, which was all about Airbnb and Uber and, and Etsy, where like when they had those PR conflicts, they just went straight at them. And, um, but they didn't go, um, Uber went with force and, and, and Airbnb went with authenticity and vulnerability. And what was interesting is that when they had their first major PR crisis, someone burned a house down or something. And um, for four weeks, I said, it's not our problem. We're not, we're not doing anything. And, um, and all his advisors, the CEO, um, Getsky, Brian Getsky, um, you know, like everyone was telling him, don't, don't, don't apologize. You know, you'll be sued and whatever. And he was like, that's unauthentic. It's not who I am. And he eventually came out and he said, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. We acknowledge our mistake and this is what we're going to do to fix it. And, um, you know, for me, if you take transparency and then through into this kind of authenticity and vulnerability, I read an email by, by him just, just a couple of weeks ago. I don't think I'll be able to find it because I got about 14,000 emails on my inbox. But um, uh, maybe, Lee, if you can find it um, just while in the background, if you can just Google it and just like see if, it, if you can find his latest email. But it was so authentic. It was like, I'm a homeowner just like you. I'm dealing with COVID just like you are. Our company's dealing with it. We've had a terrible year. This is what we've done to try and solve it. This is how we worked with our communities. And I just thought, awesome, absolutely awesome. Because everyone that's kind of from a traditional business world is like, oh, we don't do it like that. We do meetings in 20 minutes and we tell them all the stuff and we certainly don't tell them the naughty stuff. And you definitely don't turn up to a webinar wearing a t-shirt and you, know, you wouldn't have your couch behind you. It's absolutely ridiculous and you know, blah, 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 blah. And um, you know, I think... I think what, what's so interesting is that, you know, um, Maria's just said, yeah, so true. We're all so tired of fake. And, and that's what people want now. They, they want you to be vulnerable, 
they, they, they want to see authenticity. I know, Michael, you were on the webinar last night. You know, I was at my most vulnerable um, and I purposely didn't turn up with a PowerPoint and a whole bunch of numbers and a whole big speech. I tried to just speak from the heart, you know, the hurt, the pain, the learning, the knowledge, the, the, the responsibility, the accountability, the mistakes. Um, and it's interesting because this morning, um, I haven't actually told you this, Lee, I probably got 20 messages, personal messages from people, you know, and it's completely not what CEOs are supposed to do, um, but, but it works. And, and I'm not saying you do it because it works. I'm saying you do it because it's real. It's, it's who you are. Um, and, uh, and I think that's probably one of my bigger learning lessons this year. And it's something that I've always fought with people about, um, but we really are now again, and I'm kind of mulling these two together, but between our three core values and this authenticity and stuff, you know, I, you know, Lee and I have spoken a lot about it, about getting the WhatsApp groups going. And yes, it's hard work. Trust me, you and I have to deal with it more than anyone. But, but it builds trust and transparency because people can talk and they can, you know, have, fr you know, real conversations and, and stuff. It, it really does make a, a, a big difference. Point number 16 is uh, one that's very close to my heart. I, um, I won the Perseverance Prize when I was at junior school, when I was like 10. And, um, and you know, some people, they, they talk about, you know, um, perseverance being, being really, really stupid. There's this great story of... Uh, of three feet um, from uh, gold, and it was in uh, Think and Grow Rich. And um, again, I'm not going to, uh, where's the story gone? Anyway, just go and Google it. But um, the long story short is that this guy went out and he was digging gold, and uh, here it is. It's all about this, I'll send you the link. and. Um, they, they found gold and then suddenly it dried up and they quit. And uh, they, they sold the machinery to this junk man and the junk man went out and he got like an expert to come along and realized the vein had literally gone three feet uh, to the left or to the right. And uh, he went on to make millions of dollars. And the whole philosophy is, you know, never give up. Um, and I think, you know, I'll put that, that story in there for you. But um, there's a couple of books that I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm loving this book at the moment. Um, I love autobiographies and I love um, true stories. And this book is, uh, is a fascinating book about uh, the story of Nike and how it was created. Um, so I'd highly, highly recommend this book. I don't know when it came out. Um, so again, I don't know if it's an older book or whatever, but my mate recommended I listen to it. And um, I'm nearly, well, I'm actually not nearly finished. I'm only in like 1975 at the moment. And the stories are just incredible. You know, pe for people like uh, Lee and I, and, and for the rest of you that are business owners and entrepreneurs, you know, everyone sees Nike and thinks that they were like this, you know, massive billion dollar company. But when you, when you hear his stories and how they've nearly failed so many times and their Japanese competitor just like stopped serving them, uh, deja vu of what happened to me today. And, um, and, uh, and, and, you know, and then they were in court and, you know, blah, 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 and, and all these trials and tribulations. And, and today we all know, you know, Nike. Uh, so that's a book I highly recommend. Another book that I've enjoyed this year, and you can, <laughs> you can often see um, what my year has been about and what the themes are that I've been focusing on. Because uh, <laughs> if I'm looking for inspiration, it means I'm having a tough year as well. So this one is how I built this uh, unexpected paths. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to give you the link for the last one. I'll go back to it now once I've given it. Um, unexpected paths to success from the world's most inspiring entrepreneurs. Again, some brilliant, brilliant stories in there. Um, so where's this other one gone quickly? There we are, shoe dog. And then another one that I've enjoyed is Loon Shots. <laughs> so if you know me fairly well, you might realize why I like this title. And uh, with us wanting to empower a billion people, some people think we're absolutely mad. And maybe, why can I not delete this? I'm a bit confused now. I can't put this in the chat box. That's so weird.
I'll I'll put it in Scott. I don't know why suddenly I can't put things in the chat box. I don't know what's going on there. Let me just close the chat and reopen it. You know, this is a fascinating book, and um, in this book he talks about the uh, the three deaths, and you know, listening to this Nike story. I mean, they've got a lot more than three. And if you followed the wealth migrate journey, you know, we we've certainly had our fair share. And um, it just really gives you um, the ability um, to keep going. The the under the perseverance, the other one that I thought was really interesting is that when Willem, you know, came in and uh, and really started helping us, and he talked about a EXO organization and the eleven principles of an EXO. And what was so interesting is that in our organization, um, the at the top here, MTP stands for Massive Transformative Purpose. And the whole idea is that this is what gets you out of bed. This is what, like, you have good days and you have bad days, but what's your purpose? Why are you here? And it was so interesting because many of you have been in our community for a long time, and it was like, well, what's our purpose? And he got us all to say it. I mean, Lee was there. And Lee, actually, before I say what it was like, what was your experience? I mean, seven people, seven or eight of us, whatever it was, that are working closely together all the time. And, and how close were we to like all of us just nailing what our purpose was. Like, what was your experience of that? So um, working in it every day, we all had our own nuance of what it was, but we didn't all say it in exactly. We were pretty much aligned. We knew what we were doing. We were on the same highway. We weren't on the same exit, if I can put it that way. Um, and it was just actually in the words of, of how we were explaining it. Yeah, and I think um, I don't think I'm going to have to open this up quickly. Just give me two seconds. I'll open up the uh, the, the team charter. Where's it gone now? Um, And what Willem basically said to us is make it very simple, put everything on one page. And so our purpose is we help close the wealth gap. That's it. Five words, six words, five words. One, two, three, four, six words. And um, yeah, this is interesting. If you want perseverance, it really just keeps you going on track. And then the last thing I would say is around uh, perseverance is that Kensington's a really interesting thing. So Kensington's probably one of our our Worst, not probably, it is our worst performing asset. Um, and, you know, it was a big hole in the ground for a long time. And, you know, we were on a webinar just today and we've seemed to have completely turned uh, that project around. And, you know, it's got good momentum now. It's got a good project team, a good project manager, et cetera. And, you know, although the investors have lost opportunity cost of time, I've got no doubt that we will recover our capital. And, I, you know, again, for me, perseverance, that shows character. You know, it's not how you get judged when it's working. You get judged by how you behave when it's not working that I think uh, truly counts. Um, if you're going through the 20 lessons of 2020, it, you couldn't uh, have a year without Donald Trump. Um, and I think for me, the lesson I learned from him was that I'm not going to get caught up on whether he's a good person or a bad person. Um, I'm not going to get caught up on whether you should or shouldn't vote for him. But I did lose all respect for him. Um, when he announced himself the winner, when like they weren't even halfway finished counting. And, um, you know, my analogy as a sportsman, that's like, you know, the Springboks are, you know, 20 points down at half time and they announced themselves the winner of the World Cup, even though they don't come out to play the second half. Like it doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I mean, I heard today that he might still win, by the way. Okay, like I don't understand American politics, but apparently he might still win. Like apparently they're now overturning things and whatever. But for me, my point of my, my lesson is that it didn't make any sense because if he won, everyone would think he's an idiot. And if he lost, everyone would think he was an idiot. So what's the point? Okay, like it comes back to character. And so, you know, I think, um, you know, it probably comes back to team sports and stuff. You know, <laughs> you're only as good as who you are as an individual. And, and I, I mean, I just, I, I just didn't understand that at all. Like it just... I cannot understand when people make decisions where there's no upside, you know, there's like on either side, you win or lose, you, you lose both ways. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, point number 18 was an interesting one for me. 
And it was actually about living life and investing uh, in myself. And, um, you know, I, uh, I moved out of our family home in August last year and I tried to save money and I moved into a little flat. And um, during COVID, I, I didn't have it nearly as bad as Lee where I was locked down in, 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 in Durban away from her family, but I, but I was locked down in a flat and I've got quite a loud voice. I couldn't go running, I couldn't do exercise, couldn't go anywhere. All I could do was go on my balcony. And when I went on my balcony, my neighbor complained. And when I turned on my jacuzzi, my neighbor complained. And I like eventually thought to myself, someone in this building is going to die and it's not going to be of COVID. Um, they might just blame COVID, but, it, but you know, it's going to be of other reasons. And, um, and what happened was kind of halfway through COVID, I, I realized that all the houses didn't have, um, um, all the Airbnb houses didn't have any tenants. So I went to the landlord and I said, listen, dude, you've got an empty house. Like, why didn't I move in? And he sort of gave me the whole story. Oh, you know, I could earn this during, you know, if, if, uh, if I got Airbnb and I was like, that's great. If you bought Google shares 20 years ago, you'd be a millionaire. Um, and, and the point being is that I, I paid, you know, virtually double my rent, um, but it made such a metamorphic difference to my life and to Johnji's life uh, to have a house, to have a garden, to have a pool, you know, be able to park my boat outside the house again, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, I think it was a big lesson for me because I've always been a bit of a, a kind of a, what's it called, where you scrimp a little bit and you kind of hold a, a squirrel, the, the little nuts, and you, you know, keep investing for, the, for, for a rainy day. And it kind of taught me again to kind of live life and enjoy life and, you know, make, you know, make the most of, of it. So I know there's many people cringing with what I'm saying because, you know, there's always the argument to, to not do that. But, um, you know, I learned a big lesson this year, you know, you, you know, where you live and, you know, being able to sit on the balcony every day and when I do my prime and, and it's just magnificent. I mean, it's just absolutely magnificent. Um, on top of that, it's a nice big place. So, you know, plenty of space. I mean, this Christmas, if bloody COVID doesn't irritate me again, I've got about six families coming to visit. It's just fantastic, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's just really epitomizes this investing in yourself and, um, and truly living life. You know, and again, in your expression, like I'm a social person. There's nothing better than when people come and visit and I can take them on the boat and have fun and whatever. And, and you know, now nothing or no one can stop me. Um, number 19 is probably, um, again, you couldn't have a year without Zoom. And, um, and, and apparently, according to Google, the word for the year is you're on mute. Because um, we all have said that more than anything else we've said this year. Um, but really for me, and it sort of comes in line with one of the things we've already spoken about, but it's communication. And, you know, in times of crisis, in times of trouble, you over communicate. Um, now, Zoom, Zoom allows you to do that. Um, but what I've realized that Zoom helps you do is it's very functional. Um, Lee and I right now are communicating. I can see Lee, she can see me, we can talk. But in July this year, um, Aubrey, one of my team members, um, said, listen, I'm coming to see you. And it was kind of sort of just as lockdown was ending, it was kind of very new age to go see human beings. I mean, you know, and uh, anyway, he came up here and we had, I don't know, three or four days around, you know, working and sitting around the fire and having a few beers. And I just realized the connection was incredible. Um, and so in, in August, I made an effort to go and see Lyndon. Um, and then I went to Cape Town to see Gavin. And I realized, wow, this, this is like game changing stuff. So we went back to Cape Town uh, to see uh, Aubrey and uh, Gavin and Lyndon came with and, uh, and we met Gabby for the first time. Um, and, and then we tried to do it again in, uh, um, back in here in Neisner. Um, and we hopefully next week, if COVID doesn't bugger it all up, we've got the entire team getting uh, together. And um, my point in my story is that I see a world that's changing. I, I see a world where we're all working from home and we're using Zoom and I think it's very, very functional. Um, I think it's I think it's good for business and every now and again you're going to need uh, to meet face to face you know there was a property event I went to last Thursday where it was just amazing to connect with people again and to have a beer you know Michael if you're still online it's it's amazing to do work and have beer at the same time and have fun and meet people but but really the lesson for me lesson number 19 is that if you want to build good teams and you really want to build trust you have to spend time together and physical time not not zoom meetings physical time and so I see a future where there's going to be this counterbalance and I'm probably going a little bit deep into this one, but you know, Tony Robbins does lives events and they're absolutely incredible. And this year he did a, an event with 30,000 people, 30,000 people 
paying $1,000 each. Now, if you can't do the math, that's $30 million he made in four days, four days. His total cost was $4 million to set up the studio. But remember, that's a fixed off once cost. The, once you paid it, you paid it. And it was all on Zoom. And, um, you know, so why would he ever do a live event again? And, and my feeling is that this is the hybrid model we're going to move into. You'll get the $1,000 online version and you'll get the $10,000 physical version. And I think it'll be about 10x, to be honest, because humans want connection. And, um, and so, you know, my 19th lesson is, you know, we are so much more productive and get so much more done using Zoom. But, you know, there was a reason I flew up to Joburg in the last two days. It was to get the job done face to face with a human handshake, look each other in the eye. And I don't believe that's going to change, certainly not in the next couple of decades. And the last one, and probably the most important one, is gratitude. And, you know, when I look at COVID, what I've seen come up many, many times, different posts and whatever, is, you know, a lot of people have said what COVID made us realize, it took away the things that we took for granted. You know, it took away the fact that Johnsy and I couldn't go on the boat. It took away the fact I couldn't even go for a run. It took away the fact Lee couldn't fly home. <laughs> like, it literally the stuff we used to take for granted, like, we, we couldn't do anymore. And so where, where most of us live in the future and we're like, one day I'll be happy when I have money or one day I'll be happy when I meet the perfect husband or wife or one day I'll be happy when I have a bigger boat or whatever it is. You know, what COVID made us do was, was actually take away the things that we took for granted. And, and uh, I think really it, it, it brings um, humility to all of us. And, and, um, and gratitude is a practice that as, as I've studied it more and more around happiness, it's the number one thing you can do to make yourself happy. Um, because when you're grateful, you can't be hurtful or angry or sad. And so as part of the prime every day, every single day I do, what am I grateful for? Three things. And I actually try and do it in the morning and in the evening when I go to bed. And it's just so powerful. I mean, we sit around this little table here. I was doing it just before this webinar with my son. And every time we have dinner, it's like, John T, what are you grateful for today? And if I'm traveling, John T, what are you grateful for? And it's, it's very cute because after he's done, he'll then turn to me and, and you know, and et cetera. And uh, it's really a pattern. And, and Lyndon deserves the credit for that because he started that, uh, that pattern. And, um, and I highly, highly recommend it. If you don't do it for your family, do it now over Christmas. You know, maybe you might be a little bit locked down and have a bit of frustration, but do it, do it on your family meal. And uh, even if you're having a bribe sitting outside, just go around the table. We do it in our company functions. We just do it. You'll be amazed what comes out um, when, when you say to people, what are you grateful for? Um, and the last two things I would, I'll finish off with under gratitude are, you know, what I realized, you know, for that story of living in the flat, I, I truly felt like I was a prisoner. Um, and I often joked with myself that I was living in, in Auschwitz. And then you watch these movies of people that have lived in Auschwitz or, or a Vietnam um, concentration camp where every day is exactly the same. And it went on for years and years and years. And, you know, we, we were bitching and moaning because it went on for weeks and months. And yet we had TV and we had Wi-Fi and we had internet and we could talk to all our friends on Zoom. And <laughs> it's like, and I look at it from that perspective and I just go, wow. Like, you know, we bitch and moan and whatever. And, and yet you compare it to other people with real life experiences. And I suppose, you know, that just really dawned on me the reality of, you know, I was complaining a lot, but it wasn't really a, a big thing in the big picture of the world. Um, and the last thing that I'm grateful for is to this community. Um, and, and, you know, there's a young man and, uh, let me just, I'm just going to stop sharing here because I don't want to bring up pictures that you don't want to see. <laughs> so I just want to get up this picture. I've, I've done this for too long, Lee. You don't, you don't uh, just open stuff without knowing what you're opening first. Uh, so where you're spoiling our fun stuff. God, I've, I've, uh, I've learned the hard way with that stuff before. Uh, where's it gone? There it is. So uh, last Wednesday, I, um, I went along uh, to go and uh, wish Bongi well. It was his last day of matric. He wrote his last exam last Wednesday. And, um, you know, I gave him a bottle of champagne and a whole pack. I put in there, uh, Awaken the Giant Within. I put in there, um, uh, Think and Grow Rich. I bought him copies of both books. I printed out our e-wealth pack. I put in 500 Rand and said, go and buy your mates some drinks tonight um and a whole bunch of other little small gifts and and whatever and um sure this this brings tears to my eyes um you know it was 2015 
and we were doing lemonade day and this, this little some of you have heard the story before and this, this little boy just had this incredible tenacity and, and persistence and um and he won the he won the competition and and um so we flew him up to Joburg. he'd never been on a plane he never even left Neisner um and uh on the way you know up there I don't know when it came up or at what point it came up but but I said you know what do you dream about what would you like and he was in junior school he was going to high school he said I want to go to a private school one day and I said, wow, you know, it's good to know what your, what your dreams are. And um, so we were up at the, at the Wealth Movement event, and I know there were people like Michael and others that were at this event. And, you know, without any real prep for him, we said, well, why don't you stand on stage and ask people if they'll help you? And, um, you know, it was October 2015, and we crowdfunded him to go to, to Oak Hill, and, um, which is a private school. It's one of the top 20 private schools in the country. And um, that was 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and now 2020. It's been five years. And, um, you know, we've, we've certainly had some tough times. Um, you know, what's interesting I learned with crowdfunding is that everyone gets very excited in year one. <laughs> and it's kind of like having a, having a kid. You can't kind of get excited and then stop being pregnant. You know, you, you, you kind of got to go the whole way. Um, and why I'm grateful to the community and to my, mainly to the shareholders of the Global Wealth Group is that against uh, massive resistance uh, at a board level for many years, um, I've consistently got support from the shareholders uh, to live up to our purpose. And um, you know, I'm very proud to, to say that this young man um, you know, graduated last Wednesday. And next year, I'm meeting him later this week to decide what he wants to do. He's got into university um, and he's trying to decide if he should do a university course in entrepreneurship or go into a kind of a hands-on year um, entrepreneurship course uh, and or possibly even come and do um, what's it called when you work with a company um, but work with us and do the entrepreneur course there's a whole bunch of opportunities he's got um, I just want to get him out of nice not personally because um, he needs to go and play in the big wide world um, and, and I suppose Lee for me my, my closing comment is just you know thank you to everyone you know it's 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 webinars like this it's communities like this and um you know, it might only be one person and, and we want to empower a billion people. Um, but if I've learned one thing in my life, you don't start with a billion people. You start with one person and one becomes two and two becomes four and four becomes eight and eight becomes 16 and 16 becomes 32 and 32 becomes 74. And at that point I get tired, but, uh, but you get my point. And it, uh, it very, very quickly extrapolates into, into massive, massive numbers. And so, you know, for us, our 20th uh, lesson is, is, is one of gratitude. And um, I think that is all the lessons uh, for this year. You know, we've got, uh, you know, as we go into 2021, the principles of Wild 5.0 are going to get stronger and faster. All of these things around impact and your creativity, your high touch, how many people can you connect with personally, your high tech, how to use technology and your problem solving. You know, this stuff's accelerating. And, and if you don't pay attention to it, you know, I was, I've, I've been doing a lot of uh, coaching. I downloaded all Roger's coaching coils and I've been doing them all. I've, I've had about 14 hours of listening to them. And he, he used the metaphor of a wave. We've all heard it before. The tidal wave's coming, whether you like it or not. You can stand on the beach and look at it and say, hey, big wave coming. You can run up the hill and try and climb up a tree and hope that you climb high enough, or you can just learn to surf. Um, you've really only got three choices, but the wave's coming with or without your permission. Um, you know, don't forget about uh, the ability to invest in buildings like this. You know, sign up to the, to the, um, to the platform. Go and, go and sign up to the, you know, get on the digital wallet, get KYC. If you haven't used it before, um, you can, you know, do it tonight, you know, because uh, the next Wealthy Wednesday will come and, and, you know, don't give yourself excuses. And, you know, if you want to go and talk uh, with, uh, with the team. And uh, in conclusion, you know, we were about to go into 2021. And uh, what does the, word hold, the world hold for us? Well, I'm not going to tempt fate and say, are you ready for 2021? Because I sure as shit ain't ready for another year like 2020. But, uh, but but I do think that there's some very exciting things, you know, and I think COVID has taught us a lot of hard lessons. Um, and like I said to you, it's accelerated a lot of things. I know at a business level, there's many things that we're excited about. We're sharing with our shareholders next Tuesday on the 8th of December. It's, it's only for shareholders. 
uh, where we're at, where we're going. So if you're a shareholder, please don't miss out on that. That'll be our last webinar for the year. And, um, you know, really, I, I wanted to conclude by, by just thanking you all. Um, Lee, I wanted to thank you uh, personally. You know, you've been um, stoic in running all these webinars. They've been so professional um, in the way you've set them up and the way you've marketed them. And I really, really appreciate that. I know that it's not a one-man band. I know there's a whole team of people behind you that equally deserve credit. Um, so I want to say thank you to all of them. I hope that in our small little way um, in the year of 2020, we've added value uh, to all of you uh, community members. And if we have, all that we ask for is that as we move into 2021, you share it with others. You let them know about the ways that they can grow because we fundamentally believe that we can only change the world one person at a time. And, you know, here are some links, you know, if you want to go and get started, go, go and look at that. If you want to go to the platform, if you want to go and learn about, um, you know, the, the, the different webinar series, and I'm sure Lee's probably going to tell me one of the links is wrong. I did it on the plan, so I couldn't test them. But, um, but you know, they're all our different links are and everything else. And, you know, I suppose I want to finish um, off tonight's webinar. And I actually don't know if there's any questions, but I'm going to finish off with a story and then I'll answer any questions that anyone has. And um, my story is, is about a little boy. And that little boy was running a race. And he was running barefoot. And it was a it was a fun run. And it was a 5k race. And the little boy was, uh, he got halfway around. And he met up with his teacher and his teacher's name was Mr. Curly. And Mr. Curly had had a rope called Wizzy Lizzy. And when you didn't behave in school, then Wizzy Lizzy would, uh, would was visit your backside. And um, as, a, as this little boy got to about the five, year, five kilometer mark, the teacher said, you're going too fast. You're not going to make it. And what was interesting is that that little boy finished and was one of only uh, three to finish the 10K fun run um, at the age of 10. And uh, there's two lessons to come out of that is that the first is that there's always going to be people tell you that the things aren't possible. And in, in years uh, like COVID, you know, if you go and look at, at Google or you open the newspaper, I mean, reading through the newspaper today was you might as well, you know, taken out a gun and played Russian roulette because of all the negative news. Um, the world is in a negative spiral space at the moment, and there's always going to be people telling you what won't work and why you can't do it. And the second thing is that perseverance and success is a muscle. And the only way to grow the muscle is to, is to keep doing it and, and to believe in yourself and to do it and then believe in yourself again and to do it. And over time, you will get to where you want to get to. And so I wanted to finish off with that story because that little boy was me. And my whole life, people have told me what we can't do. And my whole life, I've set myself goals and milestones, put my head down, failed along the way, but just made sure that I keep going. And if I leave you with one thought or one lesson from tonight, it's don't listen to the naysayers and keep going. Good luck for 2021. That's all from me, Lee. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, I think I speak on behalf of all of us and the community. We are very grateful for you and for the time and energy that you've spent with us as a group this year. So thank you very much um, for everything that you have done for us as well. I see that there are lots of comments that are coming in. Thank you. We do appreciate them all. Um, it has been our joy to actually be online with you this past year as much as we were able to be. So there is something to be grateful for from COVID is that we got to spend a whole lot more time online with our community just because changing and going online even more. But Scott, I do see that we've got one question um, from Peter who asked which book is in your top five principles or changing Sorry, Lee, it was breaking up when you asked the question. Um, I think you said, which was the top five book principles or the, what was the other one? 
changing the world order. So which one is in your top five? Well, changing world order hasn't come out yet. So um, principles, I would start with principles. Principles is an age old book. It's, it's kind of, um, um, you know, what he's, what he's learned over life for the last 40 years. The Changing World Order is a book he's writing and he's posting each chapter on um, LinkedIn. Um, but that's more kind of economics and, and trends and where the world's going. If, if, you, if you're not into that stuff, I'd recommend watching our webinar where I tried to synthesize it for you in, in under two hours. Um, but Principles is a must read. Every single person on this webinar should, should read Principles because it's about life's principles. It's about how to succeed in life. Awesome. And thank you for all the very you, kind, uh, yeah, all the kind messages Mean, means a huge amount. We, as, as Lee and I joke, you know, we, uh, we love feedback, both positive and, uh, and constructive, uh, but we're also human. If our webinars for this year with all the positive um, communication and feedback that we are getting. So thank you very much. So those who are celebrating Christmas. We hope that you have a happy and festive um, period, that you are safe. For those who don't, uh, we hope that you enjoy some downtime at the end of a very hectic and busy year. But wherever you are, we hope that the run towards the end of the year and the start of 2021 will be surrounded with love and joy, kindness, gratitude, and safety. So from all of us at Wealth Migrate, thank you for spending the last couple of months with us, definitely for spending time with us. We really do appreciate you as our community. We have some energy that you give back to us and allow us to give you. Wherever you are, be safe, be blessed, be surrounded by love. Good night, everybody. Take care. Cheers, everyone.